What's up everybody, it's DSP uh, with another edition of DSP Inbox where basically I answer all of your questions that you send to me at the email address dspinbox at hotmail.com um, It's been a while since I did one of these videos because as I explained in a channel update I made yesterday I've been pretty busy with a lot of different stuff going on and I got caught up with a bunch of games that really ended up being a lot longer than I thought they were going to be uh, but anyway I've been compiling this list and uh, I just want you to bear with me because number one, it's hot in here, but I turned off the air conditioner so that it would sound better. Obviously, if I'm answering questions, you want it to sound as good as possible. So if I start sweating bullets, you know why. And uh, I also have my Powerade right here next to me if I need a little refreshment. Um, but the other thing is, good questions this time, I have to say. Now, it's been a while. It's been almost a month since the last one of these that I did. Actually, I think it has been a month. But uh, as you see, I'm going to go through a lot of questions, so bear with me. We're going to get through them, um, but it's going to probably be a long video. But a lot of these questions are really, really good. In fact, some of these are things that I've actually had people ask me in messages and things, and I kind of wanted to respond and have had a chance. So this is my chance. So really cool. Let's jump right into it and uh, start answering your questions. <clears throat> and no, I'm not wearing short shorts or boxers. These are, you know, short, uh, casual shorts that you can wear around the place when it's hot. I know a lot of people in one of these videos I wore something like this, and people said, oh my God, he's sitting there in his underpants or whatever. No, I have underwear on underneath. So, you fucking fags, calm down. Um, Alright, question number one. Dear Phil, in the 10 worst gaming moments of 2009, you said that you would no longer be playing any games made by Rockstar. But then why did you do gameplay of Red Dead Redemption? I thought you were done with Rockstar games. And that's from C. Contreras 97 at AOL.com. Well, C. Contreras, good question, because you're absolutely right. For anyone who doesn't know what he's talking about, go check out my top 10 worst gaming moments of 2009 on my main Dark Side Phil page. Um, my number one worst gaming moment was basically when it seemed that Take-Two Games uh, had given me a copyright strike against my Dark Side Phil channel for putting up footage of the Grand Theft Auto 4 expansion The Lost and Damned last year in 2009 when I was doing my playthrough of it. Um, but now that I have a lot more experience with these copyright claims, what I'm really finding is I don't think any of these claims have ever been put against me and probably ever put against anyone on YouTube for game footage have ever been legit. Um, if you remember earlier this year, my channel got shut down because of an Ubisoft copyright claim. That got cleaned up and they said absolutely not, it wasn't us. Well, after that happened, hot on the heels of that, I basically did counter notices against all those copyright claims that supposedly Take-Two had given me in 2009 for the Lost and Damned playthrough, and all those were cleared up by YouTube. And then subsequently, my last chapter, it's funny that he actually mentions my Red Dead Redemption playthrough, the very last chapter of that playthrough also got supposedly a copyright claim from Take-Two Games. I again counterclaimed it, and it was cleared up. So in my honest opinion, I don't think that it was Rockstar or Take-Two or anyone like that who's been doing it. I think it's malicious people who basically are jealous, are haters, people who just want to shit on your fucking in the middle of your living room floor and give you a ruin your day and give you a bad experience. Those are the people that are out there. And yeah, it's pretty sad, but there are people who think that because they can fool a site like YouTube into thinking that there's a copyright claim against someone, they see that as like power. And they're like, yes, I have no real power in my real life because I'm a fucking loser who lives in his parents' basement. But I can do this, I can fuck them this way, and that's how I'm going to get off. Because I feel like I have some kind of virtual power by fooling a website. There are actually malicious people like that, if you can believe it, in the world. So, anyway, I really don't think any company has ever legitimately put a claim against me. I kind of have to apologize if this is the case to Take-Two Games and Rockstar. Because if they didn't do it, then they're innocent. And, you know, I really shouldn't have gone off on them like I did last year. However... I didn't hear anything from them either, so obviously they really didn't give a shit um, that I was so pissed at them last year, so that's that. That's why I played Red Dead Redemption. If you notice, though, I did make its own channel, Red Dead DSP, when I did that to make sure that if there were any copyright claims, they wouldn't go against any of my main channels, and it turns out that it ended up getting one claim, which I cleared up, like I already explained. So anyway, that's only one question. Let's keep going. we got plenty to cover. Up next, the next question is, since the year is about halfway done and a lot of major games have come out, out of all of those, which do you consider to be Game of the Year so far? In my opinion, the two best ones are Mass Effect 2 and Red Dead Redemption. I'm swinging more to the Mass Effect 2 side. Also, I wanted to know which games do you think are the top for this year so far. Well, that's the same question. But anyway, thank you, Perville. That was from Perville. 
Um, you're absolutely right. First of all, it's not in the middle of the year. We're past the middle of the year. We're in the fourth quarter, baby. And once you hit fourth quarter, um, you know, this is the hardcore time for games. And we're just, well, actually, I take it back. We're one month away from fourth quarter. But this is it. Prime time. All the new games are coming out. Um, so far this year, what did I enjoy the most? I definitely have to say Heavy Rain is way up there. I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was unique. I thought that it just had a gripping story. The graphics, the voice acting, atmosphere, everything about that game was amazing. Um, and I'm kind of disappointed that, like I said earlier this year, when they canceled the rest of the DLC content for that game because Sony wants them to make motion controls for it, I really was disappointed. I wanted more. And uh, now there's not going to be any more, unfortunately. So, uh, definitely... I'd say Mass Effect 2 is up there. Is it really Game of the Year material for me? I'm not sure. I mean, it was good, but a lot of the game focused solely on the, the uh, side missions, the characters who you could recruit for your, your team, rather than really focusing on the main missions, which I found really odd. If you Actually, if you think about it, the main missions, there's only like five or six of them in the entire game, so technically, if you know, you know how to get around it, you could probably beat the game fairly quickly without unlocking everyone, and obviously you're not going to save everyone then and get the best ending, but still... I was really disappointed that the story didn't focus more on the main story of the Reapers, uh, the Reapers from Mass Effect 1. It kind of went on a tangent. So, But it was still good. The gameplay was much improved. The story was great. Um, I have to say Red Dead Redemption is definitely up there. Um, again, anytime that it seems Rockstar touches one of these open world games, they strike gold. And taking that open world aspect into the Wild West basically made for the best Wild West game ever created. And uh, I was very uh, thrilled with that game and all the antics that we did afterwards as well with the Suicide Kings and things like that. Um, some other games, definitely Super Street Fighter 4. I know I haven't gotten enough time really to touch it and play it as much as I wanted to. But from all feedback, people basically say this is much better than the original Street Fighter 4. Capcom listened to the gamers. They nerfed Saget. They made some characters better, some characters worse. But the game seems a lot more balanced and a lot more fun now. I think it's the best fighter on the market today. Uh, for a common, you know, for, for current generation fighters, that is. Obviously, if you want to ask what the best fighting game of all time is, I'm going to say Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. But that's just my opinion. Um, and there are a couple others, too. A couple things that were surprises that were a lot better than I thought they were going to be um, for Game of the Year. But I said it's probably right now that's what's in the top of my mind from what I've played. But keep in mind, we're kicking it into overdrive. I mean, you got the new Spider-Man game. You're going to have the new Fallout game, Fable 3, the new Force Unleashed. Uh, just so much is coming up. Halo, which could be a, 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 a very good game. Who knows? It doesn't have to be another ODST. Uh, there's just so much coming out. Dead Rising 2. Um, so I don't know. It could really, you know, what I think now is the best game of the year could totally change in, in a couple weeks or a couple months. So we'll see what happens. Next question. Uh, my question is, do you still actively watch wrestling? Uh, when did you start watching it? And I guess I'm assuming he means professional wrestling. Uh, what are your favorite wrestlers and storylines, both past and present, and what are your thoughts on the current product of the WWE? Keep up the great commentary, Mark. Good question, Mark, because you notice in a lot of my videos I do reference wrestling. Um, been a fan of WWE for a long time. I used to watch it when I was a little kid. Grew up with Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, those guys. And that, you know, then kind of took a, a hiatus during high school and college, but kind of got a little bit back into it after that um, as the product changed. I am a fan of it. I do watch WWE programming. I usually watch Raw and SmackDown when I get a chance. I TiVo them, so I get to watch them whenever I want. And actually, John Rambo is a fan, too, so we actually go back and forth. We actually, at one point, teased the idea of doing a wrestling show, maybe once a month, maybe once every two weeks, to talk about different pay-per-views, to talk about what's going on in the wrestling industry and our opinions. We don't know if there would be any kind of interest in that kind of thing, because obviously, this is mostly everything I've done has been gaming-related. So, But that's interesting. Give me some feedback on what you think. Um, favorite wrestlers of all time? I really don't even want to say because I've been through basically four different eras of wrestling and I can't really say, but I would say, you know, the whole D-Generation X storyline was great, the NWO storyline was great, but everyone says that. Uh, currently today, I honestly think that modern wrestling in the past, say, five to ten years has really sucked until this new angle with the Nexus, which is going on Monday Night Raw right now. Basically, you know, seven up-and-comers 
who were on a show, it was supposed to be a reality show of, you know, whoever's going to win gets a contract or whatever for WWE. And instead of going along with that, someone said, I got a great idea. Let's turn these guys into a stable, a bad guy heel stable, who just do whatever the hell they want and try to invade the WWE shows. And they've been doing this for several months. It's been a very successful angle. And for the first time, when they get in the ring and they actually wrestle in matches rather than just beating people down, you actually... They sell themselves, and they look well in the ring. And I think it's one of the best ways that WWE has started to push new talent because in previous times they try to push this new guy, and he looks really green, he looks awful, and then somehow he starts winning matches, and you're like, give me a break. These guys, they built them up enough. I think they gave them a lot of on-the-road practice, and now they actually look kind of polished because they've been going along with the talent for weeks and weeks. I'm really liking where this angle is going. I can't wait to see where it goes in the future. So right now, my favorite angle right now is the Nexus. But let me know what you think about wrestling, um, and if you think that it might be a good idea for us to do maybe like a wrestling commentary once a month or something like that. It might be something I consider doing. Next question, it says, I was on Shoryuken the other day, and I saw a bunch of guys with old join dates talking trash about you. So he's talking, he's probably saying there's people that seem to be, a, have been part of the Shoryuken.com community for quite a long time, and they were talking trash about me. I'm not surprised. Uh, he says, so naturally I was like, what the fuck? I tried asking what their problem was, and they just told me, Oh, you don't know him from back in the day. It's a long story. Anyway, I'm assuming there's a history between you and the fighting game community. No, not between the fighting game community. Between me and the shoryuken.com community. Let's get that straight. It seems like you've had haters even before you were on YouTube. Absolutely. Is this how you became known as the king of hate? Sincerely, Rich. Well, Rich, it's a long story. I'm not going to get into it. Let me put it to you this way. Way before I even thought of putting a video on YouTube, I was... A prominent person in the Shoryuken.com Street Fighter community. I started out as just a, 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 a big mouth who sucked. Started going to tournaments. Actually got good. Started winning at tournaments and placing at tournaments. And this was, I'd probably say, around the year 2000. Uh, as time progressed, I actually started traveling around the country to play. And, uh, you know, it would be funny because I would always be considered the underdog. And if I beat anyone good, it would be like a massive upset. And everyone would get all upset and say it was luck or whatever. But I was never afraid to speak my mind. I was always talking shit. I was always, you know, basically saying whatever I wanted and, and really meaning it, just like I do on YouTube. When I say stuff on YouTube, I mean it. I'm not going to censor myself or hold myself back. I say what I think is, is, is the truth. And a lot of people don't like that, you know. A lot of people just don't like that. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to admit there were times when I went out of control and, you know, I went, got all crazy and fucking, you know, said really nasty things about people. But that's just part of it. It's part of building hype. That's part of, you know, when there was a local tournament in New Jersey, I would say, well, I hate this motherfucker, and I'm going to bet him $200 in a money match. And next thing you know, there would be massive hype for this tournament in New Jersey because everyone wanted to see me play this guy for a massive amount of money. So that's kind of, you know, the deal. And a lot of people like that, and a lot of people thought, oh, he's just an attention whore, whatever. Um, but the bottom line is that changed over time, and... You know, mid-2000 to the late uh, 2000s, I became more of a, a figurehead in the community, especially on the East Coast. I started running major tournaments. I ran the East Coast Championships one year, uh, along with uh, Josh Wakefall, who's my friend from New York, also a very good Marvel player. Um, and since then, I, I had a lot of local tournaments in New York, Connecticut, things that I was doing. I was respected. And uh, basically, a lot of people started to trust in my word, especially when it came to Super Turbo. And uh, I think really where... The cookie crumbled, so to speak, is there. I had a major dispute with the people who run it, Shoryuken.com, because one of them actually had written netcode for his online service. You might have heard of it. It's called GGPO, uh, and a lot of people use that online. They say, wow, it's pretty good. It's not very laggy. The truth is, GGPO is a very good netcode, but it masks lag. And that's why when you play GGPO, it feels different than playing, say, Street Fighter 4 online, Street Fighter 4 might slow down or drop inputs. Well, GGPO also drops inputs, but it masks it very well. Uh, and so I kind of called them out on that on the forum, and I said, you know, everyone here is kissing their ass. It's really good, don't get me wrong. It's the best netcode, but it's not as good as everyone thinks it's cracked up to be. It still drops inputs. It still has these problems. I wish we would focus on solving those problems rather than thinking we found the Holy Grail. And, of course, when I did that, Everything exploded. Apparently, there were already talks to try to sell that netcode to Capcom for their games. And so they were like, oh, now DSP opened his big mouth. He blew it. I ended up getting banned from SRK for several years. Uh, I had a bad relationship between myself and the people who run SureYouCan.com. And it's not just for that. There's been, I mean, year-long disputes. Ever since the first time I met the people in person, we had a dispute about money, about Justin Wong, if you can believe it. 
when I went to my first West Coast tournament in California, it was the first year that Justin Wong had gone out there and started actually winning every Marvel vs. Capcom 2 tournament. He won the tournament, and then when they gave him his money, they, sh they basically shortchanged him. And I called it out. I said, wait, 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 wait. Let's do the math here. And I did the math, and it was actually myself and, and Henry Sen, also from New York, who both did the math in our head and said, this isn't right. He got gypped several hundred dollars from when he was supposed to win this tournament. We called him out, and basically we were told by the Shoryuken.com staff that we're idiots. We don't know what we're talking about. We don't know how to count. They said on the website all this information about how the arcade that this event was held at was going to take money and a cut and things like that. And by the bottom line, the website never said it. They actually went back to the website and had to publicly apologize later on because they realized they fucked up. But ever since then, it's kind of been like we have bad blood between us. And at this point in my life, I don't give a fuck about it anymore. As you say, I haven't gone to Evo in a long time. I haven't really traveled to go to tournaments in quite a long time, except for the Super Battle Opera Qualifier this year. And to me, it's just, it's just water under the bridge. I really don't give a shit. Um, I was going to actually go to Evo this year, but I decided not to because of the whole thing going on with Super Battle Opera. And a lot of people have asked me, well, you know, what's going on with Shoryuken? Are you ever going to come back? I'm never coming back to Shoryuken full-time. I'm done with that community because there's too many people there who just believe whatever they're told. And so for your question, uh, Rich, you know, you're asking why. A lot of people just hate on me because they think it's the cool thing to do on Shoryuken.com because there's a lot of people there who are close to the people who run the website and they're like, oh, it's the cool thing to do is hate on DSP because the, the people who own the site don't like him that much. Well... It's become like a kind of like a hobby now for these idiots, and uh, unfortunately, yeah, that's the truth. And um, so, yeah, I, it's a pain in the ass, and I have to deal with it. Uh, but I don't care, and I figured maybe I'll go to Evo one more time. It might be next year, to, uh, 2011, uh, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, that's that. You know, that's the story. It's dude, I got two fucking flies flying around my condo right now. There's one just went one way and one went the other way. How oh, pain in the ass. They must be sneaking in on the door or something. But anyway, uh, that's the story with that. Yeah, there's a lot more to it. It could be a lot more complicated, but I'm not going to get too far into it because obviously I don't want to bore you. Uh, but that's the gist of it. And uh, I might go to Evo one more time, but basically I'm kind of done from being a major part of that community simply because there's too many idiots and assholes who jump on this hate on DSP bandwagon without really knowing me, without really knowing what I'm about. And that's why a lot of people, when they came to YouTube and they saw me, and they're like, isn't this the guy who everyone hates? And then when they started watching, they're like, wow, you know, he's actually not that bad of a guy. It's because everyone basically lies and spreads rumors and makes shit up. So, what are you going to do? Okay. Being that it's almost, you know, I've definitely been talking over ten minutes. I've only answered four questions. This is going to be a long video. I'm going to probably answer one more question and then I'll break this up. We'll do maybe two parts. Okay. I'm actually going to sip here. Ah. Okay, next question. With all the video playthroughs, commentaries, and opinions, and reviews that you do, I was wondering why you don't have your own website relating to gaming. Is this something you've thought about or are thinking about? If not, then how come? From Craig Walker. Um, I've already addressed this before, but I might as well address it again publicly. Running a website is hard. Okay, Running a website, especially with the amount of people that would probably be drawn to my website, is going to be a major pain in the ass. You need a lot of time and effort to make sure that it's clean. There's not people taking, trying to take it over or spamming it. And also, I need to use YouTube. I need YouTube for web hosting for my videos. I'm not going to be able to set up my own website and host my own videos. It's going to be way too expensive. So basically, all the page would be is me linking my videos from YouTube, in which case, who cares if I have my own page or if I have a YouTube page. Now, the only thing that's lacking, I guess, would be a forum uh, where people can chat and talk about all the things that I, that I play, the games that I do, playing things like that. But I'm not really too, too worried about that. Um, and like I said, it's expensive as well. If you get a website that has traffic like mine would probably have, it would be very expensive to keep it up and running. I'm not, like I said, YouTube is enough for me. If sometime down the road I want to turn this into a full-time business, and this is going to be my job, then I might consider setting up a website. But being this is just my hobby, and I do it in my spare time, it's way too time-consuming and expensive. All right, I'll answer one more question, then we'll probably jump to it. We'll split the video, and we'll go to part two. Um, hi Phil, within the last few months of finding you on YouTube, I've seen your popularity just rise and rise, and I was wondering if you would if you would like an assistant. I'm currently unemployed, not saying that I would like to be paid, but rather that I have a lot of free time, and I would be more than happy to occupy my boredom, helping you with anything you need doing, such as updating Cafe Press, as mentioned in your latest channel update. 
Reading through emails, extracting the best questions or anything else we could think of. Looking forward to your opinion on this. So what, do you want to kind of be like my, uh, my Taj to, to, or you'll be my Taj to me being Van Wilder, you know what I mean? Like, you'll be my second in command. And that's kind of a funny proposition. Um, honestly, if I were going to do that, I would have to entrust someone, obviously, who I know. Um, but I wouldn't ask someone to do it for free. Because, obviously, if you're setting up a Cafe Press website, if you're doing this kind of stuff, and it's, it's somehow benefiting me, whether with popularity or, or money, I would want to, you know, compensate someone for that. But right now, I really don't feel I have a need for it. Um, like I said, again, if this were something I was looking to do professionally, like I wanted this to be my job full-time, like a lot of other people on YouTube, which I won't mention because they're not very talented and I have no idea why they make so much money and why so many people watch their videos. But anyway, um, if I really wanted to put that much effort into it, then I might look for to get some people to help me out um, and form a team of people I could trust. But for now, I mean, thanks for the offer, but that's kind of a crazy uh, thing, especially for someone that I don't know. So uh, thanks, but no thanks, buddy. So that's it for part one. Let me split this up, and then we'll start with part two.